Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another episode of Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today we're going to take a look at Cymerge. This is a game that's being distributed by Passport Games. You might have seen it on Kickstarter a while back. This is a two to five player competitive game where each player is working against the other players to gain the most victory points at the end of the game. It takes roughly an hour to two hours to play, depending upon the game length that you choose, which you'll be able to select at the beginning of your game. In the game itself, each player is going to control a powerful house that will employ dragons and warriors to uh, be able to move into different spaces and gain the benefits of them. So it is a worker placement game. So during your turn, you'll have one main action where normally you're placing one of your uh, either spearmen or dragon riders into a space to gain its benefits. And then you can perform a number of free actions. Uh, on top of that, uh, as objectives come out or, or other conditions are met, the game will end. And then the players will total up their points based on the dragons that they've uh, been able to get and some of the other conditions that are met. So my impressions of this game so far are pretty good. I, I've enjoyed the games that I've played. Um, normally it's not my particular style of game. Um, as there, there's no dice in this game at all, the, and uh, it's total strategy. Uh, from the worker placement to the worker management and resource management to the area control aspects to the game. Uh, everything is very planned out and uh, calculating, so if you really like those, those heavy strategy games, uh, definitely take a look at this one. I, I definitely feel like it can meet some of those needs of, of the heavy strategy guys that are out there. Um, there's a lot of different elements in this game that you have to keep track of from turn to turn. As far as those strategy elements, there really isn't a lot of rule elements to the game itself. And there's two different modes. There's the basic mode and then the dragon mode, um, which will let you tailor some of the uh, different things to make it even less random. As at the beginning of a basic game, you're just going to be dealt uh, certain tiles from each set. Where in the dragon mode, you'll be able, you'll be dealt uh, tiles, and then you'll select the ones that you want to keep. So uh, even there, you can even have uh, even a higher level of strategy uh, as you work into the game. So let's head to the table, and I'll teach you how to play. Here we have one of the player dashboards, and there's two different sides. We have the spearman mode side and the dragon lord mode depending upon which mode you're playing in the game. For our game, we're going to go ahead and play it in the Spearman mode. So other than that, we have the player color in the ribbon. We have the player's resource, starting resource list, and their resource grid, which each one of these spots will be a spot that they can place a resource in. On the side here is a quick reference. The first part of it is the it lists an action that you must perform during your turn from the list. After that, then we have the list of free actions you can perform during your turn. And then finally, removing action tiles from the wild and the three different conditions for doing that, which we'll cover more during the game. Here we have an example of the five different types of action tiles. We have production, research, transformation, power, and exploration. Now, each one of these tiles is going to have a picture of the type of, of action tile it is and then underneath it as you can see here in this picture is a quick reference number which will reference in the back of the rule book each tile by number and it will tell you specifically what each of these spaces gives you. So other than that you have the top circle with four different little circles in it and this is a, each one of these spaces is where you can put one of your vessels to gain the resources on the side. And then going down the side of the tile is going to list a single space for a vessel and the resources that you'll gain from placing a vessel there. Now you'll also notice on these two tiles over here, we have symbols of dragons, which means is that you can only place a dragon rider in the symbols that have the dragon. And the symbols that are blank can be, have either the spearman or the dragon rider in them. The last type of tile that we're going to look at, which works a little bit differently, is the exploration tile. With this one, again, you must have a Dragon Rider placed in it. In order to do that, you must spend the resources listed here. So we'd have to spend one Wisdom and two Stone to place our Dragon on one of those spaces. From there, one time during each of your turns, you, will, you can spend the resources listed here to move your Dragon down. 
Each time the dragon is placed on a tile or moved down, they will gain the resources that are listed next to that space. When a dragon is placed on the last space, again, he would receive the resources that are listed there, and then he, this will be removed and the tile will be removed as well as the dragon has completed the tile. Now, with exploration tiles, you can only have one dragon on there for each player that has a color. And as you can see, when you move from this space down into these spaces, you can only have two dragons in those spaces. And in the last space, it'll be one dragon. So any other players that have dragons here will be given back to the players when the one, one dragon reaches the bottom space. Here we have some examples of the different objective tiles. And just like any other tile, in the top corner here will be a reference number that will reference the back of the rule book that will explain how the tile works specifically. So other than that, these tiles at the end of the game will have potential to grant players additional victory points based on the pictures that are pictured on the objective tiles. So for example, we have the four different tiles here that have pictures of dragons on them. Each player that has the dragons that are pictured in the tile will total up the number of, of dragon ability markers that are still on those dragons. The player that has the most will receive the first reward. The player that has the second most will receive the second reward. And the player that has the third most will receive the third reward. Other than that, you have two other uh, tiles down here that will grant you different things. So this one here will grant you rewards based on the number of, of dragon ability markers that you have throughout all the dragons that you have and that will cover first, second, and third place. The last one here is for the player that has the most vegetables and meat combined, and there's only two rewards for this one, so the player that has the very most and the player that has the second most will get rewards for that. Here we have the 12 different types of dragons that are included in the game. At the top of each dragon card will be that quick reference number which will reference the back of the rule book, and it'll tell you each one of the abilities in more detail, just in case you're not sure on what it is. Each dragon card will also have three abilities listed on it, and each time a player gets a dragon card, they will receive the three dragon ability markers that will be placed in those spots. As players take free actions to spend those abilities, they will remove them and gain the resources that are listed on the side, and these tokens will be returned to the main stack. I would like to go over real quick how the dragon ability markers work and how they work when you replenish them. So there's a couple of different things on here. The first is, is that we we, there are single-use dragon abilities. So when you remove a dragon ability marker from a space that has a single use, you cannot replenish that space if you gain new dragon ability markers. The other thing is, is when you purchase a new dragon and you get the dragon ability markers, you must place those on the new dragon. You cannot choose to place those markers on previous dragons that you have. The one other thing is if you're replenishing dragon tokens, so say that you placed your uh, vessel on a space that gives you two dragon tokens back, you must place the dragon tokens on the leftmost spot that's opened. You cannot choose to place them here first, so you would have to place them there. And then you would have the choice. You can either fill this spot or place a dragon token on this dragon. You can place it on any dragon you have, it just must be the leftmost spot that is open that you must place your dragon token. So like I said, I could place it here or here. I could not place it here. And then this one is a single use. Okay, so the last thing we need to do before we move into board setup is to separate our action tiles into each one of their represented stacks. From here, then we're gonna go ahead and shuffle each stack, but we're gonna go ahead and start with the power action tiles. So we're gonna shuffle this up and then randomly deal one of these to each player that's playing the game. In our game here, we're playing a two-player game, so each player will receive one. The extras will be returned to the box and will not be used for this game. From here, then we're gonna to go to move over to production tiles. We'll shuffle those up just like the rest. And we're gonna go ahead and randomly remove four tiles from the game. From here, then we're gonna go ahead and deal one of these to each player. And then the rest will be made into a complete stack. From here, then we're gonna to go to exploration. Again, shuffle them up. Randomly remove four. And then each player will receive one. Next, we have transformation. 
So we shuffle that up and remove three of these tiles. And then the rest will be added to the stack. Players will not receive any of the, uh, the transformation tiles. Last, we have the research tiles, which again will be shuffled up. We will remove three and each player will receive one of those tiles. Finally, the final stack here will be shuffled up and will be placed on the board, and I will show you guys where that goes in a little bit. Okay, so now that we've finished giving each player their action tiles that they need, let's go ahead and finish player setup. So after this, then we're gonna go ahead and get each player their starting resources, which are two vegetables, one meat, one wood, and one stone, two wisdom, and a, a weapon. Each player will also receive one dragon rider and one spearman. From there, then we can go ahead and shuffle up the dragon card tile cards, and each player will, each player will receive one dragon tile to start the game with, and they will also receive the starting dragon action abilities for that. So now we're going to take a look at board setup. So the first thing is, is the board itself. You have the city on the inside here with the score track along the border. And then over here we have the wilds. So each player is going to get a scored marker and they're going to place it over here at the beginning of the score track. From there you can go ahead and grab the objective tiles, go ahead and mix them up and place them on your objective spot. You can also grab that stack of tiles that we made from the action cards and place it down here. From there, then you're gonna draw the top four cards and place them in each one of the slots here. And these are the slots that players will be able to purchase these tiles from, pay, paying the cost in each section there. From here, we can also put out the vessels that are extras that players will be able to purchase throughout the game for each player that's playing. And we have the dragon ones down here. Now, the game, uh, the instructions themselves tell us to place the dragon tiles off to the side, but for uh, this demo, I'm going to go ahead and place them down here just so that you guys can see where they're at. Otherwise, they would be outside of the board and you wouldn't be able to see them. Now, over here in the wilds is where players are going to be able to play the uh, tiles that they have in their hand that are hidden. With it being a two-player game, these three sections here will be covered up because these are for three, four, and five-player games. So you can simply just grab three of the tiles that you're not using from the box and place those over those sections so the players know that they cannot place tiles there. Other than that, you can go ahead and put out the resource uh, piles. And I went ahead and bought these little cases at Walmart. They're cheap uh, and they hold the, the different resources very well. From here, you're ready to start the game. So now I'd like to take a closer look at the board. So as we were saying earlier, this is the city section. And these have the same types of places that the action tiles do that we talked about earlier. So with the ones that have the dragons in them, you can only place your dragon rider tokens in those spaces. And then the ones that have nothing in them but circles are the ones that you can place the dragon riders or the spearmen of your choice. And then each one of them will list different resources or things that you'll gain. So for example, with this one, you would spend three wood and it would give you two dragon ability tokens that you can place on dragons that you already have in your possession. Over here with this one, we would spend a stone, meat, vegetable, wood, and a weapon. And this one would allow us to draw three tiles, dragon tiles. We would keep one of those dragon tiles, and we would gain three dragon ability markers. And then the other two tiles would be placed back either on the top of the stack or on the bottom of the stack, it is the player's choice. And that's the same way with each one of these sections, and the rule book does outline them just in case you're unsure about how they work. Other than that, you have the wilds, and like I said, during your turn, which we're gonna go over in a little bit, you'll be able to place one of your action tiles in one of these spaces, along with one of your vessels to gain the benefits of the tile. On top of that, depending upon the tile that you place, you will also get rewards for placing a tile in those places. Now the one other thing we have is objectives, and when you place a dragon up there, you would be able to draw three objectives, choose one, and then you would have to pay the cost 
in order to place the objective in one of those spaces. Now you would gain the ability or the points as well based on the space that you place it in. The one other section I'd like to cover real quick is the scout market. So when a player places a vessel here, he would gain one wood or one stone and choose one of the tiles here to take. Now keep in mind he does have to pay the cost in, in that tile to purchase it. If he can't, he can also choose to spend one weapon to draw a random tile from here. So let's go ahead and say, for example, that one of our players purchased this tile here. This would be added to his stack, and then all other tiles would slide up or slide down numbers. So the three would go to two, and four would go to three, and then we would flip over the next tile and add it to the fourth slot. So now we're ready to start the game. So the first thing we need to do is to choose a starting player. You can do this in any fashion you want. The rulebook describes it as whoever has uh, ridden a dragon latest or ridden anything latest. Uh, another way to do it that I would prefer is to take either a certain number of stone or wood tokens and then add one wood token in there so that you have one for each player and then hide them and have each player draw and the player that draws the odd one would be the first player. So we're going to go ahead and say that the blue player is the starting player. So during a player's turn they must perform a main action. They don't have a choice in this, they must perform it and they can choose from two different options. The first one is to place one of their vessels, which would be their spearman or their dragon rider, in one of the action spaces, either in the city or in the wilds on a, to and on a uh, tile that is there. The other option that they have is to retrieve any of their vessels that they've already placed in the city or on the wilds. They can do this even if they have not used all of their vessels yet. So for example, let's go ahead and say that our blue player has played a couple turns and has two vessels out there. He has no vessels left in his pile, so he can choose to take back one or all of the vessels that he has out. The only thing that he cannot take back are vessels that he has not purchased yet. So these over here, he's not allowed to touch. So the other option player has to have is to perform free actions, which are listed on their card. They can do this before, during, or after resolving the effect of an action space. They can do each one of the free actions one time that are listed on their card in any order that they choose. They don't have to do these. These are free actions and are not required to do during their turn. So the first one is to place a tile in the wilds. The only restrictions to this is that they must not have placed a vessel yet because as soon as they place the tile and gain the resource, they will place one of their vessels on that tile, which would also count as their action that they must perform. Now, if there are no free spaces here, if players have got tiles all over on all three spaces, then the player can spend one weapon token to remove that tile and add it to the Chronicle, which we're going to cover the Chronicle in a little bit. The only exception to this is that they cannot choose to remove an exploration tile. Another thing, another option that players have as a free action is to advance their Dragon Rider on an exploration tile that they might have a Dragon Rider on. They can also use dragon, Dragon's abilities that they have by removing a Dragon Ability token from that space and resolving it. Now this is the only free action that you can do multiple times during the turn, once per each of the Dragon Ability markers that you spend. So for example with ours, we can do these two over here or all three of them if we choose. And this can be done on any of the Dragons that a player has in their possession, which there are no limitations on the number of dragons you have if you can spend the resources to purchase them. Now at the end of a player's turn, there is a limit to the tile number and resources that a player can have. So at the end of their turn, they must discard down to five action tiles if they happen to have more than five, and they must discard any resources that they haven't used if they have more resources than the spots that they have on their board, or more than 15 resources. So another symbol that you guys may run into on some of the action tiles is a symbol that allows you to spend a vessel, which can either be, in, in this example here, is a dragon rider, and sometimes they're spearmen. So when you spend one of the vessels, you will take one of the vessels you have that, that meets the requirements of that and move it from your area either from the board that you've already played it on or from your area itself and add it back to the regular stock. 
The one exception to this is that you cannot spend a vessel if it is your last vessel. You must have at least one vessel with you at all times. All right, so real quick, I'd like to take a closer look at placing action tiles and exploration tiles. So we're going to go ahead and say that it's the blue player's turn, and as one of his free actions, he's going to decide to place a tile in the wilds. So he's going to go ahead and place a, his action tile here. Now when he places it, he will get one vegetable. On top of that, when he places it, he must place a vessel there. If he doesn't have a vessel to place, then he cannot choose to place an action tile. So he's going to go ahead and use his spearman, and he's going to go ahead and put him here, which will get him another vegetable. Two wood. and a stone that he gets to add to his board. At this point, if he doesn't have anything else that he wants to do as far as his, his, his free actions are concerned, then his turn will be over. He doesn't have any extra resources and he still has his tiles that are under five, so he's okay. So we'll move over to our black player's turn. And Normally you wouldn't play a uh, exploration tile at the very beginning like this because you don't have a lot of resources to work with it, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyways. So, and he's going to go ahead and get a meat as he gets to choose either a meat or vegetable. And then he can spend, or he must spend the resources up top in order to place a dragon on the tile. So he would spend one wisdom and one weapon, and he will go ahead and place his dragon rider on the tile. And he will gain two power points, so he'll shift this over here to the two. Now, he can only do this once per turn, and this is a free action. Now, the one other thing that you have to keep in mind is that he, each turn to move down, he would have to spend a wisdom and a weapon. So, at this point, he has another wisdom, but he doesn't have a weapon, so he's going to need to build up those resources to be able to move down those slots farther. Now, the other player can choose to pay the cost as well to move his Dragon Rider into one of those spaces, and then they can kind of race their way down to that final spot. All right, so now that our players have played a couple of action tiles, now we're going to look at the conditions that are going to cause us to remove action tiles from the wild and add them to the Chronicle. So there are a couple of conditions that, when met, will remove those action tiles, the first one is if a tile becomes empty. So let's go ahead and say that the blue player has used his dragon already, and now he's ready to pull his, his vessels back. So he grabs a dragon, and if he removes the spearman and causes the tile to be empty, if a tile is empty at any time, it is removed from the wilds and added to the chronicles. So we'll just stick it off to the side. The, the other way that tiles can be removed is if all three spaces are full of tiles, and a player wishes to place a tile. They can spend a weapon to remove any tile that is on those spaces. The only exception to this is that you cannot spend a weapon to remove an exploration tile. Now, if a tile is removed in this way, so let's go ahead and say, for example, that the uh, black player hid, has a weapon and he spends it to remove this tile, any vessels on there are returned to the player before the tile is removed. Now, the one other way that a tile is removed is if there are four vessels on a tile. So let's go ahead and say that we had this tile back out here, and there happen to be four vessels. Now in a two or three player game, it'll be three vessels. So if the blue player had played there, and then he had had a dragon here, and then let's go ahead and say that the black player decided to take this space. Once he puts his uh, vessel there and gains the resources that are listed for that space, it has met the requirements to be removed. So each player would receive their vessels back, and that tile would be removed as normal and added to the Chronicle. So now we're ready to cover the Chronicle. Any tile removed from the wilds during the game by reaching the maximum number of vessels, having no vessels, or expending a weapon token is placed in the Chronicle. Filling the Chronicle with a specific number of tiles is one of the ending conditions for the game. And this will be denoted at the beginning of the game when you decide what length of game you would like to play. There are short games, medium games, and long games.
Uh, when one of the ending conditions is met, either there are four objective markers out for a short game or five for a long, or if there, you meet the number of to tiles that need to go into the Chronicles, the end of the game will be triggered. The player that triggered it, their turn will, that is the last turn for them. The other players that are playing will get one final turn, and then the game will end and we'll move into scoring. So the first thing during scoring that we're going to do is we're going to total up the number of power points that, that each player scores for objectives. So starting with this first one here, we're going to look at the three dragons that are on there and see who has those dragons. So player one has one dragon that has one dragon ability, so he has one there. And player two happens to have two of the dragons for a total of five dragon ability tokens that are on there. So he has won this one and will get 10 points. So our black player will move up 10 points. Blue player had the second most. So he will pick up five. And then moving to this next tile here, we're going to take a look at the dragons on that one and see who has those dragons. And the blue player happens to have two of those dragons with a total of four ability tokens on them. So he's going to pick up another 11 points which is going to put him at 16. Once you've resolved all the objective tokens, then the last thing is, is that each player will score one power point per three resources that they have. So the blue player will pick up one, two, three, four more power points. So he'll be up to 20. And black has picked up two additional power points as he has two full sets of three resources. At this point, the game is over, and the blue player has won with a total of 20 points. So I hope that gave you guys a good idea of how the game runs and uh, how each one of the, the different aspects of it functions. As always, uh, please leave me any questions or comments in the section below. And if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please consider liking it and subscribing to my channel. Uh, every little bit helps. And uh, until next time, uh, see you at the table.